Hi, and welcome back to another episode of our painting together. Now, last time you guys chose to do a beautiful tropical setting, so we'll go ahead and get started on that. And also, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. Let's get started. Now, as you can see, I spent just a couple seconds and put a basic sketch on the canvas. I don't even have every rock in, in the right spot. I just kind of got a basic thought as to where I might want them. And it's simply to make sure that I get it similar to the picture that I showed you last week. That's the only reason why I did that. There, now I'm going to just mix together a beautiful soft orange color and use this to block in, block in a little bit of our little island back here. Maybe this is, I don't know if it's an island or maybe we're standing on an island and it wraps around or it's just a part of the coastline. It doesn't make any difference. You guys can sort of make it whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just here to paint it. There. <laughs> okay, here's a little bit of brown into the mix. Let's get just a little darker as we go out much paint there okay good and we're gonna go ahead and highlight this but just for now I'm working on these beautiful little well the changes in color I want everything to be pretty subtle in the background that way it fits with the painting there we go see that just a little darker a little more brown as you come forward And the ones up here will get a lot more highlight than the ones back there. Just spend a couple more minutes here and we'll move on to something else. Now with my little detail brush, I'm going to drop on some highlight out here. And you can do this as quick or as slow as you feel like doing. It's not gonna make a whole lot of difference because this is kind of our, our little painting together. Well, because it is our painting together. I'm gonna sit here and make sure I get these right where I want them. Make sure they're nice and they look good. It's gonna take just a little extra time. If you're doing this more as a practice painting, just throw them in quick, who cares? <laughs> because you'll get a good result either way. I'm using my detail round. You could use the three quarter brush or a filbert brush would be just as good. You just get a slightly larger effect as well, which may, we may even change to it. May not wanna, may not wanna use this thing all day. We'll see. There. Of course, this is dry down here. We haven't put any paint down there yet. So feel free to stick your hand there. Make life easy on yourself. There. Mm. All right. Now you'll notice here, let me show you my paint. So I changed my colors. There's a little brown maybe just for fun. Yellow, white. So you can change your colors as you go and really make it look nice. See that, that's a little more subtle there. You don't want it to be flat though. I don't know if you can even see it, but oh, in person you can see it. And so make sure you got a lot of these beautiful little variations in color in here. Water's a lot of fun to paint, so I can't wait till, can't wait till we get in here and start doing our little seascape, but this is setting us up for, for that. I wanna make sure we get it done done really nicely so that our seascape really works and it looks nice. There. I'm just going to continue doing this. I'm going to get a little darker, maybe a little more red as we go away from the background. There. Now on this rock over here on the left, we want to do very little highlight because our light source is somewhere behind this rock, kind of filtering through this way in the painting. This is pretty much backlit, so if you were to just highlight the whole thing, oh, yikes, it would stand out and it would be so weird. So we're going to avoid doing that. But obviously you don't want just a flat rock. So what we're going to do is, you know, maybe there's light bouncing off of the water that we're going to paint, or who knows, it doesn't really matter. I just don't want a flat rock. So I'm going to paint in a few brush strokes of very subtle color here, just brown and little mud that was laying around. It's got a lot of red in it, so it doesn't really matter the color. I just want to make sure that I get some form in this rock. Very subtle. Good. And we can also enhance that just a little more. Okay, let's set down that brush, pick up our little detail round, and I've loaded it with a color that's sort of like that right there. In fact, I think it might be that color. <laughs> okay, little, little trees right here. There. Now I'm going to do just a few because it's extremely repetitive. So there, here's the little guys. Make sure you get them 
spaced differently. The size has got to be different. Now, because we're working off of a dry canvas here, even if you weren't, even if this background was wet, you'd probably still get these little tiny holes of the canvas showing because this is a soft brush. Don't let that bother you. It'll help to soften it a little. Just go with it. There, nice and impressionistic here. Now we'll get a similar shade to this mountain and we'll do the same thing. There, see that? Look at how impressionistic it is. That is so important. And also, I found it very useful to, I just took the brush when it was kind of running out of paint here and I feathered that. See that? So it looks like brush and thick areas and all that. So you don't just want a bunch of toothpicks st standing out here on the mountain. That's what I had and I, something was wrong. So I just softened it and fixed it. So there you go. Kind of helps you in case you get into the toothpick situation too. So don't panic when you get into little problems. The more you practice, well, the easier it is to see the problems and not panic and just, you know, fix them. There. Mm, I love it. Just spend a few minutes on this group and we'll move on to the next one. They're gonna get just a little bigger. You can even do a couple that are significantly larger on this, this little island. It feels close to me. So we'll kind of, we'll kind of make it come closer there. Now we're going to go ahead and just work on a couple of larger trees up here. Actually, we're going to go one more, one more larger than this. So they're not even the largest, but anyway, slightly larger trees. Good. I'm not going to do as many because these things will distract, right? Because, you know, these back here, they just sort of melt. These will not melt. So, pick a few. That's a cool one there. Watch how we can do this. Make sure you got a thick enough base here. I'm gonna show you something that's kind of cool. Right, so we have this thing shooting out off the painting. Normally not a good idea. Watch that, watch this. Take that limb and wrap it right around. Sort of bring yourself back into the painting, you know? You don't, see how they can kind of help to bring you back in? There you go. See that? Now it's not so distracting and it gives some variety, you know, I think that's cool. All right. Well, there you go. I'm going to repeat this just a couple times. There. Some are shorter and some are just a bit taller, but keep them all similar in, in size. You don't want anything that looks too distant. All right, now let's do just one more big one up here. And I am um, still using a similar color as the rock. Okay. Gave myself that little line. Make it just a hair thicker. You gotta be able to support all these branches and palm fronds in the wind, right? There, okay. Look over here, make sure you're visually matching the, the size and the scale correctly. Good. And you know, you could, you could make this whatever size you wanted, depending on, you know, where this is going to be. We may even shrink the, the right hand side, you know, bring it up a little. I don't know. We'll figure all that out later because that's easily adjusted with the water. So I wasn't even worried about the base areas down here. Okay. Now I am not going to highlight these today. We may need a special episode just for highlighting. We'll see. Depends on how things go because I, there's just too much to do. And I also, I want to brighten up the background. I want to make sure that my wave is lit nicely. So I don't want to, you know, there's just no rush. I don't want to do these palm trees too early. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave them as is and we'll highlight them and we'll, we'll make everything just a little brighter, a little nicer in some future episode. <laughs> there you go. So make sure you guys are continuing to, to participate with me. It's a lot of fun. Oh man. It was great. I'm glad you guys chose this scene. I think that's really cool. It's, you know, tropical scenes are, we don't do them that often, so it's kind of fun to do them together. There. And make it just hair thicker, because you know, it's got the little dead limbs and stuff in here. And there's really not a prevailing wind today. But I bet you it gets windy here. There. Nice. All right, well now it's your turn to vote. So the first option that we have here is a very simple little beach scene. Maybe 
we'll have this wave kind of crashing up against the shore and we'll work a lot on the sand, giving it a beautiful reflection of the sky and the other colors around it. Or we could do a wave facing the other direction with maybe a, sim a similar long shoreline here on the bottom. It'll kind of span across the canvas and maybe a slightly larger wave and we'll work more on the wave and the crashing foam areas. Or we could do a large wave crashing against many, many big rocks here that we'll put in the foreground and we'll have more emphasis on the rocks and the wave crashing and working throughout the rocks and the foam. All right, well, that's all we're gonna do to our little painting today. Remember to vote for how you want this painting to continue. I can't wait to see what you guys choose. I hope you had a great time. Thanks for watching.